is Aaron East with MMA UK News, and I'm joined today by Roker Roughhouse MMA's Joshua Abraham, who makes his long-awaited return to the CW cage on November no um sorry on November 25th in Newcastle. Right, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to speak with me today, Joshua. Mate, it's all right, mate. Don't worry about it. Look forward to it. Nice one, man. Right, and congratulations on your upcoming inclusion to CW one uh, one six four. I can't wait for it, me, you know. It's, it looks like a good card, doesn't it, as well? Yeah, it looks amazing. It's been a while since I've been there as well. They've definitely, uh, well, they've definitely made some announcements to uh, for you uh, to warrant such a return, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for it. <laughs> well, I trust your preparations have been going well in the build-up to Newcastle. As as we previously mentioned before we went on, uh, so you've done like a comp today, this morning. That's why you look so tired. <laughs> Yeah, we did. Uh, so I, I train at Alliance Newcastle with uh, Chris Short, who's my jiu jitsu coach. Yeah. On a Monday Monday morning, it's uh, it's comp class, so we do like half an hour drilling, mm. and then an hour of rounds. Um, it was just no, no. You know, I have a nice relaxed Sunday. I had a day <laughs> off yesterday just to chill out. I was we had a few lads compete yesterday, so I didn't do any training. I just thought I'd take the day off. Mm. I woke up this morning. And I was like, ah. Oh, <laughs> God, I go and got smashed this morning. <laughs> it's all worth it in the end, isn't it? When you hear that crowd roar. <laughs> oh man, a hundred percent. I'm putting my like, you know, when I was younger and I fought in cage warriors the first time. Yeah. Like I didn't put really a hundred percent into anything I did. Like I didn't put a hundred percent into my diet, my training. Mm. I just kind of like was young and thought I'll get away with it because I'm young. These <laughs> lads are a bit older. Not the case. Yeah, you got to try a bit harder when you're older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm trying to work for, like, just as much as I can in every area I can, do you know what I mean? You can never be too prepared. Mm. Yeah, 100%. And it's been um, and it's been over four years since the CW crowd. I've had the pleasure of witnessing you um, a fight under the banner. And no doubt you're hyped to once again take the walk with Graham Boylan's iconic promotion. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for it. It's gonna be um like I say, there's a, there's quite a good um good few fighters on this Cage Warriors card that are exciting. Mm. So I think uh, like and right in the northeast, I think we all come to fight. You know what I mean? Mm. All the northeast lads always put on exciting fights. It's always good to watch. One hundred percent, you are some of my favourite fighters out there, especially especially with Cage Warriors. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and with such a period away, well, the crowd will expect a huge change in your game. And since your last venture with the promotion, you've taken the walk to the Lions Den under K1, as well as MMA rule set, well, both ending in victory for yourself. Uh, yeah, right, and these yeah. came uh, um, after what, some years from competition. Well, for the viewers that are curious, well, what, are you, um, what have you been up to in that period um, away from the cage? Just chilling, you know what I mean? <laughs> just enjoying life, mate. I think when you're young and you dedicate all your time into this, yeah. you get the point, like I got to the point where all my mates were like, oh, let's go do this. And I was like, nah, I'm training, I'm training, I'm training. I didn't really like get any time to just travel about. Like yeah. a lot of the lads, like my head coach on top of, he does uh, a lot of IBJJFs around the world. Mm. And I was always like, oh, I can't come. I want to do this fight. I want to do that. And I just thought, for, so for the last like four years, just been traveling around, doing some super fights in jiu-jitsu, some jiu-jitsu comps. Mm. I've still been training every day. People think I had like four years off and I was I was off. Yeah. But I was in the gym every day. I was working with my amateurs, trying to get them ready for their fights. Just trying to make the level of the like the Roka Rough House better. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like share my knowledge with others instead of just because I'm a big believer in when I'm in fight camp, I'm selfish. Right, I just care about me. Like that's the most important thing when I'm in fight camp is myself. Yeah. And then I can't give my time like coaching to the lads or like helping the lads as much as I want to help the lads because I, I need to prepare for what I'm about to do. Yeah, it's what the crowd don't get to see, isn't it? All the stuff that goes on in the background. Yeah, it's it, it's tough, mate, because like I, I I've been with Roka Ruffles for ten or eleven years now, mm. like. And a lot of the lads are starting to get to the level where they're getting good now. So I can use them as training partners and, and like, 
we spent, like I say, I spent four years just helping coach and get the lads up to a good level where they don't, they're not, they don't need me, but they they're good enough to do their own thing as well and have their own like kind of structure and idea of what they they need to do themselves. Yes, yeah, well, good to see what your training partner, especially the ones you've like, uh, trained up yourself as well. Just go out there into the yeah. world and do their own thing, isn't it? Just an, it's like a, there's like, it's weird. There's no better feeling than like seeing the lads that you've trained and been with, like they've been here for a long time, like now start to find their feet in the cage and they're all they're all winning, getting good fights, being big shows. You know what I mean? And it's like, I sit back and it's like a sigh of relief because I think, oh, well, we've smashed it really. You've yeah, done well, man. And I definitely um, enjoyed your one at Sparta Fight Nights as well. That was such a unique event. <laughs> yeah, it was. You know what? I was trying to get um because they did a like, what was the rules? It was like a ten minute round of Pride rules, and then it was a minute rest, and then a five minute round of Unified MMA rules. Yeah, I was right up for that. Me, that was like just it's just violent. That isn't it? It's mad. I thought I'll have one of them, like, and then the K1 fight come about, and I just thought I've always done kickboxing since a kid. I've never, I've only had one kickboxing fight, and it's I've, I've done it since being a, a little little kid. Yeah, you would have blinked, you would have missed your one. That was well, it didn't last too long. You literally smashed it less than a minute, I believe. It was that, <laughs> it was that welterweight as well, you know. So I didn't have to cut any weight. Yeah, I was just in. No, I was enjoying my fight camp because I was a. Uh, I was a little bit heavier when I started it, I think. Mm. It was like 83 or something, but that's an easy cut. Yeah, definitely. And as um as I previously stated, it's been four years since your last appearance with Cage Warriors. Well, but what have you learned about your game since pulling on the famous yellow gloves back in 2019? I don't know if you've watched any of my old Cage Warriors fights. Um, I was proper shit at wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... I, I, I'm always confident in my stand-up. I'll always be confident in my stand-up. And um, and I'll always be confident that I know I can go out and put on a good fight and an entertaining fight. Yeah. And I was so young and naive back in the day where I thought, I don't need to wrestle. I'm going to knock this person out. Mm. And then I'd get took down and hit the deck and think, oh, shit, I need to learn how to wrestle me. So I think if you think, it, like if people think that old Josh is going to come and just try and stand and have an uneducated fight and just make it entertaining I will make it entertaining but with a little bit more sense and patience behind what I'm doing yeah 100% I mean it's always good to like uh, you know, I look back at your like uh, future I don't know your past and come back with a, with a hell of a lot of a stronger game plan for your future no doubt about it oh yeah 100% me I just I, I took the time to learn on what what I needed to do do you know what I mean yeah Definitely. And, and that's the most important thing for being a fighter, I think. Yeah, 100%. And an exciting return for yourself, as well as a promotion, as Cage Warriors returns to Newcastle for the first time in an, um, in a um, novennial. But you're set to face off with Aaron Johnson, who will no doubt be just as eager to impress on his CW return. But what do you make of Aaron as you prepare to collide in Newcastle? Seems sound, doesn't he? Looks all, looks all rounded. I'm not one of these that like uh, like are gonna fucking try and talk shit or do nothing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a fight at the end of the day. Um, I've watched a little bit. I, I think the only time I watched him is when I accepted when I got asked to fight him. We watched like one of his fights. Yeah. And then other than that, I just let like I let my coaches watch him. They've all studied his game and and stuff. I need to work on. I just if you don't trust your coaches. You're at the wrong gym, aren't you? 100%. It's always great to be laser focused on your own game plan as well as definitely. Yeah, yeah. So they've all got their stuff that they're putting, that they've been watching, they think I should work on. I've just been, just been following, doing my thing, letting them tell me what to do. Yeah, man. And after such a length of time since promotion's last visit, right, the, um, Ian Dean and his team have been, um, have gone all out 100%, as we uh, previously said to make uh, all the fans in attendance have a night they'll not soon forget. So, um, other than your inclusion on the night, are there any confirmed fighters or bouts in particular that you're looking forward to witnessing? That'll be Perry and Chris, aren't it? That'll be Perry. great. And, and, and Millard as well. 
do you know anyone from the northeast really? Um, I know Millard's out in America at the moment mm. training, um, and he looks like he's shot up levels and levels. Um, but I think Perry, for me, I think probably fight of the night's going to be Perry versus Chris. Hundred percent. That's definitely a barn burner. I literally saw that and I was like, "Wow, what?" Yeah, as soon as it got announced, it was awesome, wasn't it? Hundred percent. Literally, I think the internet exploded on the on on Cage Warriors socials that day. (laughs) The best, probably one of the better fights they could, because it's not far for Chris's fans to travel, and he always brings a good crowd, and Perry always brings a good crowd. But Perry's exciting to watch, isn't he? Hundred percent, man. No doubt about it. And um. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking for you today, mate. I know you're very tired, as you can see. So I'm going to let you go and have a yeah. little rest. And, um, I'm going to have a power now. <laughs> I don't blame you, mate. <laughs> right, but last but not least, do you have a message for the viewers and the fans that are going to be in attendance and anybody you'd like to give a shout-out to? I'd like to give a shout-out to all my sponsors. Um, Coffee 57, Sunland, Cruise Fightwear, sorted me out a cool custom kit. It's going to look awesome on the night. Um, RNA, plumbing and heating, AJ Athletics, they saw all my training gear as well, and uh, EC Properties. Nice, I'd like mate. to give a shout out. Nice. Roker Roughhouse Alliance, Newcastle, and Charlotte Hill, my strength and conditioning coach. She's the worst one to train with, but she deserves a <laughs> shout out because it makes me better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't do it better um, with them guys, man. No, definitely not. And I just think if you haven't got your tickets for Cage Royals, you've got to get them now because they're selling out fast. And with with the fights that have already been announced, you can fucking daft not to for the price of them, do you know what I mean?